MK677, BPC157, GHKU. If these sound like random license plate numbers to you and you're really confused because someone on social media is telling you these are the ultimate biohacking molecules and you're really confused, well, this video is for you. Because you're probably wondering, do these peptides actually work or are they just expensive hype? Are they safe? Can they cause harm? And what's the deal with these big names, semaglutide, dihexa, MOTC, KPV, thymosin alpha-1? Well, I'm Dr. Michael Muller, and I've been using therapeutic peptides for over 10 years. And today, I'm going to go ahead and walk us through the seven areas, categories, that I see benefits when using peptide therapy. Now, this isn't medical advice, but it is well grounded in science and in my real world experience. So you can go ahead and decide what's right for you, but please always check in with a healthcare professional. As a lot of these are not well tested and they're not FDA approved. So please, please, please be careful, especially when you're sourcing them. And also I'll invite you if you're into men's health, performance, longevity, hit the subscribe button and stick around. I'd love to have you around for future videos. And also please let me know in the comments if there is a particular peptide or supplement you'd like for me to chat about. I also have some juicy discounts down there as I'm affiliated with many companies that carry products that I use myself. Let's jump in. Now, before we get into the seven major categories, I think it's actually really important we chat about what is a peptide. At the simplest level, a peptide is the short chain of amino acids. Think about it like a small protein. Once you get really long amino acids, you get into protein territory. But in a short range of just a few amino acids, we refer to them as peptides. And most peptides work by binding to receptors on your cells. Most often, they're G-protein couple receptors. It's save that for another video. But they dock and then they tell the cells to do specific things. Often like turn this gene on make more of this protein, reduce inflammation, release this hormone. Many of you already know famous peptides like insulin. Insulin tells your cells to pull in sugar from your bloodstream. Growth hormone regulates our growth, recovery, and metabolism. Glutathione is a tripeptide. It's all the rage nowadays for IVs and IM shots. It's the body's main antioxidant. So it's needed for detoxification. It's an antioxidant defense. So when we're talking about peptides, we're not talking about something that's foreign or exotic. These are things that our body has already been used to. So how does our body make or use peptides? So let's connect something that you do every day, like eating protein. So when you eat a steak or you eat eggs, that drops into your stomach. And once it's in your stomach, you release hydrochloric acid and pepsin. These start breaking down the proteins into smaller things called amino acids. Those amino acids go into your small intestines, they're absorbed into your bloodstreams, and then they're floated all throughout your body. These amino acids are then the raw material. From there, your body can build things like muscle, connective tissue, neurotransmitters, can make hormones, enzymes, and assemble very specific peptides that we're gonna chat about that do specific messages throughout the body. Now, a classic example I like to use with my patients is thinking about Thanksgiving. At Thanksgiving, a lot of people eat turkey. Turkey is high in the amino acid tryptophan. So after we eat, it goes into our stomach, tryptophan into our blood vessels, and then it gets pushed throughout the body. From there, our body can take the tryptophan, turn it into something called 5-HTP, and eventually serotonin or melatonin. So many people say, oh, you had turkey at Thanksgiving. That's why you're tired, because it has a lot of the precursor to serotonin. Now, while that's actually kind of a myth, because there are plenty of other protein sources that have high amounts of tryptophan, it's still a good analogy for us today. So we go from protein, amino acid, to peptide that's our powerful signaling molecules. So once we have then these peptides, they go around the body and say things like repair tendons, increase growth hormone, burn more fat, upgrade mitochondria, modulate the immune response. And that's why they're so interesting and why people are so fascinated and excited to be using them in the longevity space. They're also great for people who are in dis-ease. And the key idea that you want to focus in on is that peptides tend to nudge your existing systems not just override them. So they're usually very targeted. They hit one receptor, one pathway, and hopefully we have one outcome. And many of these are based on natural sequences that our body already uses or slight modifications to them. Now on the flip side, I don't want to downplay this. These are not toys. I definitely advocate that if you're using these, you should be working with a medical professional, get good blood work, get a plan, 
And a lot of these don't have long-term safety data on them. And many of these are not FDA approved. So please be very vigilant when messing with peptides, sourcing them, using them, figuring out their half-life, how they interact with your body. Are you using other medications? Are you on other supplements? There's a lot to take in here. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and walk through what I see as the seven major categories that people are using the peptides. Number one is going to be regeneration. And the three that I think are the most important in this category are going to be BPC-157, thymus and beta-4, aka TB-500, and GHKCU. So we'll start with BPC-157, which stands for Body Protecting Compound. It's derived already from a naturally occurring amino acid that is already inside of our gut. And some of the major things the BPC-157 does is it promotes new blood vessel growth. It's called angiogenesis. It improves collagen and tendon repair, and it really helps the gut mucosal lining. So when I think about BPC, I think gut issues, I think tendon repair. I also, it helps with pain and pain reduction. So someone that is suffering through GI discomfort or someone who needs a little oomph right after they've had surgeries. In the peptide circles, you'll see doses usually 200 to 500 micrograms once to twice daily, done either orally or injectable. I almost always start people on the oral just because it's safer. And these are often cycled, you know, four weeks, 12 weeks is kind of that happy medium. There are people who have like Crohn's and colitis that are on this continuously. And again, this is somewhat experimental, so be very safe. Next, thymus and beta-4. This is actually an immunopeptide. And usually I explain to people, when you sprain your ankle and you have inflammation, what's going on is your body, your brain, you're releasing cytokines, goes to your brain, stem cells, go down to the area to help with regeneration. Your thymus is in your neck, and that has these immunomodulators. It actually increases actin regulation and cell migration, That is, which this is really going to help the area of damage. Now, a slight nuance, we have thymus and beta-4, and you can cut out a sequence of that called TB500. And TB500 is a snip out of thymus and beta-4. And the benefits that we're looking for as far as regeneration going is going to be mostly in that snip. And when I think about TB500, I think more systemic regeneration as far as muscle, tendons, ligaments, neurologically, cardiac issues, because like I said, with the TB500, it's more of an immune response. So it's, it's going to be more systemic and all over your body. And the dosing, again, ranges as low as 500 micrograms, upwards to two to five milligrams a couple times a week. Just depends on the protocol that you pin down with your practitioner. GHKU, this is the beauty peptide. And so as far as regeneration goes, GHK copper, this is a Another naturally occurring peptide that's found in our plasma and our saliva. It's really popular in the beauty and aesthetics world. GHK is really important for collagen synthesis. So we think, yeah, tendons and ligaments, but also tightening of the skin, hair density and regrowth, and overall wound healing. GHKU is applied in a variety of ways. Some people do topical creams and serums. There's micro needlings, injectable, and even oral forms. And so these are the three that I would put in the regenerative category, and you can bundle them together in a stack that people call the glow peptide. Often when you put BPC and thymus and beta together, that's where we get the Wolverine blend, adding GHKU, then we start calling that the glow blend. And then if you add KPV, which is more anti-inflammatory, we'll talk about that more in the gut section, you have the glow blend. All of these are really great for regeneration.